conversation between two very jealous women, similar to the one you just saw. Um, it's unique in that you get to see what's going on inside their head. So even though it's only two women, there are four actresses, and I think they're rather wonderful. Erin Brady, Amaretto Ashley, uh, and Krista and Julia Rodriguez. Hope you like it. subtle overtones, but together we are one woman, the wife of Charles Goodrich. There I disagree with you, Hetty. I alone am his wife. Harriet, how could you say such a thing? Certainly I'm the one who flatters him. I could be the one who talks to him. If he gave you the chance, you'd tell him at once if you dislike him. I don't love him, that's certain. You leave all the fibbing to me. He doesn't suspect that my calm, suave manner hide your hatred. Consider me and not the scheming it causes me, it is safe to say he is my cousin. Oh, if you love him. I? I haven't any feelings. It is my business to love and love him. And why did you object to calling him my husband? I present your approbation of a man who has managed only through the cleverness of my audience, <coughs> who may be clever enough to deceive him here. But I am still the one who suffers. I can't forget that he is my husband. I can't forget that I might have married John Caldwell. How foolish of you to remember John just because you met his wife by chance? That's what I want to talk to you about. She may be here at any moment. I want to advise you about what to say to her this afternoon. By all means, tell me now, and don't interrupt me while she is here. We have the most annoying habit of talking to new people at present. It is all I can do to keep my poison and appear not to be listening to you. Impress her. Teddy, dear, is it not my custom to impress people? I hate her. I can't let her see that. I hate her because she married John. Only after you had refused him, was it my fault that I refused him? That's right, blame me. It was your fault. Told me he was too poor and it wouldn't be able to do anything in Look at him now, known in Europe, just returned from eight years in Paris, famous. He was too poor to gamble at the time. It was much safer to accept Charles's money and position. And then John, he appeared jealous today. Shall I be haughty or cordial or caustic or. Above all else, you must let her know that we are rich. Oh, yes, I do have quite easily now. <coughs> you must put it on a bit. Never fear. Tell her I love my husband. My husband, are you going to quarrel with me? No, I have no desire to quarrel with you. There's much to accomplish. I couldn't get away from you if I tried. You were stupid fool to make me refuse, John. I'll never forgive you. Never! Don't get me all excited. I'll be in no condition to meet her properly this afternoon. I could choke you for robbing me of John. Don't lust me. You don't know how you've made me suffer. It is not my business to have heartaches. True bloodless. Nothing but sham. Sham? Well, I... Be quiet! I can't let her see that I've been fighting with my inner self. And now, after all my suffering, you say it has cost you more than it has cost me to marry to Charles. That's the pain here. In my heart, I paid the price. I paid. Charles is not your husband. He is. He isn't. He is. He isn't. I'll kill you. Don't. Don't. You're stronger than I. You're a He's mine. He's ours. Ring. There she is now. Wait, I can't let a telephone girl down there. She might hear herself. This is proper. Show Mrs. Caldwell up. I'm excited. My heart's in my mouth. And they stick you for my nerves in two. Don't let her see your nerves. Quick, put the veil on. So she's you trying to do. Papa Charles is rich and fascinating. Boast of our facts. Make her feel she needs us. I'll make her ask John to paint us. That's just my thought. If John paints her portrait, we can wear an exquisite gown. And make him fall in love again, then. Yes. Oh, Barbara, I'm so glad to see you. That's a lie. It's enchanting to see you too, Harriet. I'd bite you if I dared. Wasn't it a stroke of luck? I've thought of you so often, Harriet. 
and to come back and find you living in New York. Mr. Goodrich has many interests here. Flatter her. I know. Mr. Goodrich is so successful. Tell her we're rich. Won't you sit down? Thank you. <coughs> what a beautiful lamp. Do you like it? I'm afraid Charles paid an extravagant price. I don't believe it. I'm sure he must have. How well you're looking, Margaret. Yes, they were not. There are several in your eyes. I haven't eaten since breakfast, and I'm hungry. How well you were looking, too, Harriet. You have hard lines around your lips. Are you happy? Don't let her know I'm unhappy. Why shouldn't I look well? My life is full, happy, complete. I wonder. <coughs> my, life I is, my life is complete, too. My heart is torn with sorrow. My husband cannot make a living. He will kill himself if he doesn't get an order for a painting. <clears throat> you must come and see us in our studio. John has been doing some excellent portraits. He cannot begin to fill his orders. Tell her we have an automobile. Do you take lemon energy? Take cream. It's more filling. No, cream, please. Only cakes? I could eat them all. How many lots? Sugar is my thing. Three, if you please. I used to drink very sweet coffee in Turkey. And ever since I... I don't believe you were ever in Turkey. I wasn't, but it's none of your business. Have you been in Turkey? Did you tell me about it? Change the subject. You simply must go there, Harriet. You have so much taste in dress, you would adore the costumes that they wear. Is she going to pass the cake? John painted several portraits there. Oh, stop her bragging and tell her we have an automobile. Cake? At last. Thank you. Automobile. Follow up the costumes with the fact that she would make a good model for John. It isn't too early to be getting at what you came here for. What delicious cake. There's your case for the auto. Yes, it is a good cake, isn't it? There are always a great many people buying them at Harper's. I sat in my automobile 15 minutes this morning waiting for my chauffeur to get it. Make her order a portrait. If you stopped at Harper's, you must have noticed the shop windows at Henderson's. Aren't the gowns alluring these days? Even my chauffeur notices them. I know you have an automobile. I heard you the first time. I notice gowns now with an artist's eye, as John does. The one you have on, my dear, is very feasible. Don't let her see you're anxious to be painted. Oh, it's just a little model. Perhaps it's not the gown itself, but the way you wear it that pleases the eye. Some people can wear anything with grace. Yes, I'm very graceful. You flatter me, my dear. On the contrary, Harriet, I have an intense admiration for you. I remember how beautiful you were as a girl. In fact, I was quite jealous when John started paying you so much attention. She's gloating because they lost him. Those were childhood days in a country town. She's trying to make you feel that John was only a country boy. Most great men come from the country. There is a fair chance that John will be added to the list. I know it, and I'm bitterly jealous of you. Undoubtedly, he owes much of the success to you, Margaret. Your experience in economy and your ability to endure hardship. Those first few years in Paris must have been a struggle. She's sneering at your poverty. Yes, they were hard at first. Not the luxurious start a girl has who marries wealth. And now you married Charles Ford's money. But John and I were so congenial in our tastes <coughs> that we were simply impervious to hardship or unhappiness. Do you love each other? Is it really true? Did you have all the romance of starring towards on? She's taunting you. Get even with her. Not for long. Prince Rare soon discovered John's genius and introduced him to wealthy Parisians who gave him many orders. Are you telling the truth or are you lying? If he had so many opportunities there, he must have had great inducements to come back to the States. We did, but not the kind you think. John became the rage among Americans traveling in France, too, and they simply insisted upon his coming back. Who is he going to paint here? What names dare I make up? Just as present, Miss Dorothy Ainsworth is posing. You may not know of her, but she is the daughter of a wealthy miner who <coughs> struck gold in Alaska. I dare say there are many Western people we have never heard of. You must have found social life in New York very interesting, Harriet, after the simplicity of our hometown. There's no need to remind us that I'm beginning to be sane. Of course, Charles is dead, but they think I could be delightful for me. They are so well connected. Flatter her. I heard it said yesterday that you are becoming quite popular. Someone said you were very clever. 
Nobody. <coughs> um, confidences should be suspected, respected, I mean. I also heard it said that you were gaining quite a reputation as a critic of art. I make no pretenses. Are you and Mr. Goodrich interested in the same things? No. Yes, indeed. Charles and I are inseparable. I wonder. You have another case. Oh, yes. Oh, I really shouldn't. After my big luncheon. John took me to the Ritz, and we are invited to the Bedfords for dinner. I really shouldn't, but the cakes are so good. I'm starving. More tea? Yes. No, thank you. How wonderfully life has arranged itself for you, Harriet. Wealth, position, a happy marriage. You've had all opportunities to enjoy the pleasures of life. Beauty, art, how happy you must be. Don't call me happy. I've never been happy since the gave up John. I'll be serious without him. A future without him. No. No. I shall win him back. Away from you. Away from you. I sometimes think it is unfair for anyone to be as happy as I am. Charles and I are just as much in love now as being married. To me, he's a dearest man in the world. My John is. I love him so much I could die for him. I'm going through hunger and want to make him great, and he loves me. I should like to meet Mr. Goodrich. Bring him to our studio. John has some sketches to show. Not many, because most of them have been bought by the subjects. He gets as much as $4,000 now. Don't pay that much. As much as that? It's not really too much when you consider that John is in the foremost rank of artists today. A picture painted by him will double and triple in value. It's all a lie. He is growing weak with despair. Does he paint all day long? No, he draws advertisements for our bread. When you come, call her so he can get the advertisements out of the way. Otherwise, he might come while he has a sitter. And John simply refuses to let me disturb him while he has a sitter. Think how we're unfortunate. Legrand offered to pay him for a thousand. Louis Legrand's reputation isn't worth more than that. Well, I've heard his work well mentioned. It's true. He's doing splendid work. Oh, dear me, no. Louis Legrand is only praised by the masses. He is not accepted at all by artists themselves. That's the really painful price. The Grange thought I was a good subject. Let her fish for it. Of course you would. Why don't you let the Grange paint you, if you trust him? He doesn't seem anxious to have John do it. And yet, the charge is only a thousand, which is one might consider it. Give us the order. John is so despondent, he can't endure much longer. Help us! Help me! Save us! You don't seem too eager. If you really wish to be <coughs> why don't you pay a little extra and have a portrait really worthwhile? John may be induced to do you for a little below the usual price, considering you two used to be such good friends. Yes! That's very nice of you to suggest. Of course, I don't know. For God's sakes, give us the order! Well, I don't know if you would. John is very peculiar in these matters. He sets his value on his work and thinks that beneath him to discuss price. He needn't try to make us feel small. But I might quite delicately mention to him that inasmuch as you have many influential friends, you would be able to... to... Finish what I don't want to say. Help her out. Oh, yes. The attractions of all the exhibitions are important. No doubt I... Hey, John. No doubt I shall be able to introduce your husband to his advantage. Saved. If I find John in a proprietor's suit, I should take pleasure, for your sake, in telling him about your views. Just as you're sitting now with your lovely pose. We can go now. The one who thinks she's doing with the paper. It will give me pleasure to add my name to your husband's list of patronesses. She doesn't suspect what you came for. Run home and tell John. I little guessed that when I came for a pleasant chat about old times, that it would develop into business arrangements. I had no idea, Harriet, that you had any intention of being painted. By the branch, too. Well, I came just in time to rescue you. You managed to order very neatly. She doesn't suspect you wanted it. Now, if I'm not satisfied with my fortune, I shall let you go with it. I'm relying upon your opinion of John's talent. You don't have to stay so long. Run home and tell John. You always had a feeling of time for my Uh, it is <coughs> too loud now. Run home and tell John the good news. Hurry! Uh, one does not fall out of one tells the truth. I must be going, Harriet, or you will have me completely under your spell. Yes, do go. I have to dress for dinner. Oh, don't hurry. 
I hate you. No, I really must. But I hope we shall see each other often at the studio. I find you so... stimulating. I hate you. It is indeed gratifying and a pleasing spirit. <coughs> I came for your goal. I've had such a delightful afternoon. I'm going to make you and your husband suffer. My kind regards to John. He's forgotten all about you. He will be so happy to receive them. I can hardly wait to talk to him again. Now what I shall wait then until you send me work. I shall speak to John as soon as possible and call you to tell you when to come. I love him. I love him. I'm starving. He's starving. I'm going to take him away from you. I want your money and your influence. I'm going to rob you. Rob you! What a pleasure it is to know you again. It's been a joy to see you. Goodbye. Goodbye, my dear.